Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, we're here to talk about Disney today. Obviously Disney went woke and they went broke. Now maybe they're not completely broke, but it certainly is having an impact on their financials. Uh, we could see the stock price for the year to date is not looking too rosy compared to where it used to be. So maybe at the beginning of the year, uh, before some interesting things happened this year, we were flying high at about $160, a little less than, but now uh, it dipped down to as low as 91 and is currently sitting at about $100. Now that's interesting. <clears throat> uh, you can see that uh, April 2022 uh, quarter, uh, they did uh, show some increase in revenue, 23%, but net income year over year is still down 47%, almost 48%. Diluted earnings per share down 47% and net profit margin down 57% year over year. So where will they end up with at the end of the year? We don't know yet, but without a doubt, they definitely did go woke. How do we know this? Well, Let's just start looking at some other information here. For example, Lightyear. This was the movie that came out uh, not too long ago and absolutely bombed. Now, everyone has chalked this up to it really essentially bombing because uh, a bunch of uh, you know conservatives uh, all boycotted it. And I'm sure that didn't help Disney at all. But uh, the other thing that happened is the movie just sucked. But let's read a little bit of this uh, article here from Inside the Magic. Uh, Lightyear ratings plummet and the same sex scene sparks review bombs. According to this article here, Lightyear hasn't even debuted in theaters yet, but the Toy Story spinoff already became the worst rated Disney movie in history. They're talking about the alleged review bombing. Now, the Pixar and the Walt Disney have been swallowed by online hate, backlash, and controversies surrounding their newest film, Lightyear, uh, and latest addition to the Toy Story franchise starring Chris Evans. Uh, so I think it's interesting to note that, uh, well, let's see, Disney did restate a certain scene that was originally cut, then they put it back in. That ended up in this movie being banned in over 10 Middle Eastern countries. I'm sure that didn't help their box office any. And while Pixar was reportedly able to add that back a cut scene of Hawthorne and her significant sharing a kiss, Lightyear has fallen victim to quote unquote review bombing, right? So indeed, this is IMDb, so maybe on IMDB, there was review bombing taking place, uh, but we can go and check some other reviews as well, which we will do shortly. Uh, so while the motives behind these review bombs are unclear, uh, according to this article, Disney is still working towards getting the movie out to as many audiences as possible. Pixar's fans and critics alike are enjoying the film. That's an interesting comment to make. Scoring the newest animated feature with a 79% on Rotten Tomatoes at the time of this writing. Uh, nonetheless, politics have swelled the popularity of Lightyear. Oh, eh, you can tell that this article is a little out of date. The family feature has now become a discussion topic that fans are having a hard time grasping. Without a doubt, um, Chris Evans coming out saying what he did on Twitter, which we'll get to in a minute, definitely did not have a positive impact on the movie. Um, if you wanted to bring people in to watch this movie, my guess is the, the best way to do that is not by calling them idiots. Uh, let's look at these alleged positive and negative reviews and review bombing. First of all, if we look at the current score, the audience score for Lightyear is actually better than the critic score. The critic score now, after the movie has been released and after it's been well reviewed, is actually only a 75%. Whereas the audience score is actually higher, it's actually an 84%. Well, that's pretty interesting. So obviously, review bombing did not have a significant impact on the score here on Rotten Tomatoes overall. Let's go look at the critics' reviews, though. These are supposedly the critics' reviews. Um, remember, critics just love this according to the article that we just read. But we're going to read some of these reviews here. Lightyear has a luxurious atmosphere and protagonist, but a confusing story results in a film that is barely entertaining. 
That was a 1.5 out of 5. This is interesting. Essentially, what we're getting here is Buzz's origin story, which is all well and good, but episodic. And that's not exactly a ringing endorsement. That was a three and a half out of five. That's considered fresh. Hmm, I find it boring to infinity and beyond when it narrates the origins of Buzz Lightyear in a rush and on autopilot, five out of 10. This one's interesting. This one is considered fresh by a top critic here. The original score was a 2 out of 5 though, so that's confusing to me. There are some striking designs and a few hat tips to 2001, but it all feels a bit perfunctory, like a successful launch that has no destination among the stars or anywhere else. And look, these go on. This is just like the first five here. They go on. There's 301 of these, and most of them, even if they're a positive review, they have something like this, like this one. It doesn't quite make it to infinity or anywhere beyond. The villains just don't do it for me. Uh, not a Toy Story movie, so leave the expectations at the door. Uh, the result is an adventure comedy without grace or emotion. Again, these go on and on and on, you can see. So let's move on from here. So what was the controversy surrounding this film? Well, it was around a same-sex kiss. Some people took issue with having the same-sex kiss in a movie. Here's the issue with that. Let's, let's just jump into what Chris Evans said. Lightyear star Chris Evans has slammed critics of a same-sex kiss in his new movie, calling them idiots. The real truth is these people are idiots, uh, Evans said. Every time there's been social advancements as we wake up, the American story, the human story, is one of constant social awakening and growth, and that's what makes us good. Now, I think that's a positive part. If he had just said that, maybe nothing bad would have happened. But what he did was call uh, a significant portion of people who don't want to see this particular item in a movie idiots. I can separate this out into this. Just because someone doesn't want to see this in a movie doesn't mean that they hate all gay people. But for me, look, I don't want to see um, any kind of sexual content in a Toy Story movie, period. I mean, there was a little bit of flirtation between Woody and Bo Peep, and that was a joking, comedic type way, but there was never anything serious, and they were sort of like not real people, right? They were toys. Um, so uh, aside from that, uh, that was the extent of any sexual content in the original Toy Story movies. Um, in this one, there's definitely an agenda that, that Disney is now pushing. Um, if you don't believe me on that, we can touch on that in a moment, but for sure, you know, it's beginning to come up more and more in Disney movies. And I think just because a family doesn't want to see this in a children's movie, which I think is it's inappropriate for that audience, uh, it doesn't mean that it can't be in other Disney movies. Like, you know, Disney has older movies that are for adults, and that's probably okay then, right? I mean, I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with that. Um, if they did, they'll just not go see it. And that's actually what happened. Like, in this case, people who found out about this and didn't want to see this, and they knew it was coming, even though I hear it was very short and it wasn't really a big thing, it was a blink and you miss it kind of moment, essentially, um, people were put off about all the controversy by it. And this is really why stars should just shut the hell up and stay the f*** off of Twitter, really. Lightyear's box office story got even worse this weekend. This movie tanked. First of all, it wasn't a good movie. Secondly, the controversy put people off of wanting to go see it. After a rough opening and an even worse subsequent weekend, Lightyear continues its disappointing decline at the box office, right? Let's, let's see, numbers for the July 4th weekend available on Box Office Mojo provide even more clarity. Lightyear's struggling performance, Minions Rise of Gru, ranked in 108 million at the domestic, in its opening weekend, crushing every other film in contention, including even heavy hitters like Top Gun Maverick, which had been in the movie, had been open for several weeks by then, and Jurassic World Dominion, which also had been open for several weeks by then, I believe. Uh, Lightyear, however, slipped down another spot to position six and grows to almost 64% less week over week. Overall, Lightyear's declining performance seems to indicate that the fans are not as receptive to dramatically altered spin-offs of characters they know and love. And that's really another issue here was Pixar replaced Tim Allen with Chris Evans. 
maybe this wasn't actually a very good idea. But, you know what they say, get woke, go broke, right? Let's look at the numbers here. So again, look at the production budget. The production budget for this film is $200 million. Now, what is it ranked in? Raked in? It's ranked in $213, $214 million. We're rounding up, okay? Unfortunately, that's not good enough. That means this money, this movie did not make money, all right? And why is that? Well, look, the break-even point for most movies is roughly at twice the budget. So break-even would have been maybe about $400 million. Now, maybe uh, we can back that down a little bit for Disney because, you know, maybe they got some good deals or good advertising deals or good advertising prices. Maybe they didn't go all out on it. Let's just say they didn't and that they only spent a total of, you know, $300 million then, right? Let's be very conservative and say they only spent 300 Hell, let's just say they only spent $250 million with advertising, which means they basically didn't advertise it at all. The movie still didn't break even, all right? And generally, it's considered that this movie should have made $400 million to break even. So we can clearly see that with Lightyear, Disney went for woke and they ended up with broke. This did not work out at all for them. That's the first half of this Disney get woke, go broke story. There's a whole nother part of this story where we really dive into is Disney actually trying to de-woke or not? And we're gonna cover that in the second part of this. So if you're interested in that, Check out uh, the second half of this video uh, is Disney trying to de-woke and I'll even put a card uh, up in the corner on this video so you can see and check that video out. I'll also place a link in the video description down below. That's all I've got for right now though guys. Want to help support the channel and you want to help smash the narrative then you can help by smashing the like button and smashing the subscribe button. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you on the next video.